This script was uh, unlike any I've ever seen before, um, but what was recognizable about it were the uh, relationships between the main characters that I recognized. What do you think of her, hon? Trying not to, kid. Good. It was all in that screenplay. The humor was there. The heart was there. Still, it's got a lot of spirit. We had a, a pirate, and we had a wizard, and we had a farm boy and a princess, and we had bickering robots, and I thought, what's not to like? It was a form of popular storytelling that allowed you to just into the world of the characters and to enjoy the story. It has become a cultural phenomenon. Its motifs, phrases, May the force be with you. and characters are a part of the consciousness of millions of people around the globe. And though the Star Wars universe might seem to have sprung fully formed from the consciousness of George Lucas, the truth is it might have been a very different place. Yeah, originally the story was about Luke Starkiller and Starkiller was ultimately the father, uh, and the twins were his kids, and then that eventually evolved into the story being about one of the twins, and that the father being the bad guy, and it, you know, it went through a lot of different drafts of moving the story around and trying to get the right fit. Though they populate a galaxy far, far away, the characters of Star Wars embody classic archetypes from myth and legend. Good luck. Lucas spent over two years developing the screenplay, carefully fitting the pieces together. As you write a screenplay, you sort of move characters around. It's like a chess set. You have a certain set of main characters, you have secondary characters, you have sidekicks, you have villains, and you have henchmen. And you kind of move these around to figure out how the story is going to play itself out. To help translate his characters from the written page to three-dimensional life, Lucas hired illustrator Ralph McQuarrie. I found it very helpful in doing science fiction and fantasy to work with an illustrator to try to make concrete what I have in my head so I don't have to spend a huge amount of time describing every little minute detail. I can just simply do a picture of it. And I sit down with Ralph and I tell him what the character is, what it looks like, and then he does a series of sketches and I take those sketches and I say, no, I want it more like this, I want it more like that, I want the eyes bigger, I want it smaller, and sometimes completely different. No character represents a more primal archetype than the hero of Star Wars, Luke Skywalker. There is no particular character in mythology or in stories that connect directly with Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is a hero, and uh, it's more uh, generic, it's more of a motif that comes out of the various books that are written about mythology and fairy tales, such as Joseph Campbell's uh, Hero of a Thousand Faces. Luke Skywalker is a tough character, uh, because by the nature of that type of character, they have to be an everyman. They have to be the person that we, the audience, relate to. He was the person that we went on this journey with. The dashing figure of Luke Skywalker was destined to capture the imagination of a generation of filmgoers. But would he have been as popular had he been played by, perhaps, Kenny Baker? There was a point where Luke Skywalker was going to be a midget. And all the people, you know, on the farm and everything, the uh, aunt and the uncle and that whole group were all going to be little people. That boy is our last hope. No, there is another. It was always about these twins and their father. That was sort of the only thing that's sort of been a constant through the whole thing. And at some point, I took the female twin and made her the hero. And then eventually, I shifted it around to the male character. I'm not going anywhere. They're going to execute her. Look, a few minutes ago, you said you didn't want to just wait here to be captured. Now all you want to do is stay? Marching into the detention area is not what I had in mind. But they're going to kill her. Better her than me. One of the ways of telling a story is to have two main characters that are exactly the opposite from each other, so that they contrast. I had Luke, who was the idealistic, naive farm boy who was going out into the world, a little frightened to do that take on the responsibilities. We had the old man who was the guide and the nurturing person who was sort of sending him off and giving him advice as he goes. You must learn the ways of the Force if you're to come with me to Alderaan. Alderaan? And then you usually have the, the sidekick whose morals and everything else are very opposite of the hero. And so they kind of disagree on things. And in this case, one of the main themes is compassion and helping one another. 
uh, of selflessness as opposed to selfishness. So I have one character who's very selfless. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. And another one who's very selfish. I ain't in this for your revolution, and I'm not in it for you, princess. I expect to be well paid. I'm in it for the money. So I put them together, and so they're always contrasting their points of view on the situation. Well, Han Solo is that character that we always wished we could be. I think most of us felt like Luke Skywalker, but we would have loved to have been Han Solo. Lucas originally envisioned Han Solo as a huge green-skinned monster with large gills. Raised by Wookiees, Solo had befriended Chewbacca at an early age, and together they had become space pirates. Han Solo was meant to be a very nefarious character. He did start out as a you know, monster or a strange alien character. I finally settled on him being human so that there'd be more relationship between the three of them. That's where Chewbacca came in as the, as the kind of alien sidekick. While several of the Star Wars characters are drawn from myth and legend, Han Solo's sidekick Chewbacca was inspired by a more personal relationship. My original inspiration for Chewbacca was my dog Indiana. She was the one that sat there with me as I was writing the script all the time. She'd ride in the car with me and be my co-pilot. And when she'd sit in the car, um, she would be as tall as I am. She was an Alaskan Malamute. She was very big. I thought that was a funny image. And as I was looking for a kind of alien co-pilot for Han Solo, I immediately thought of Indiana. We had a, an old 30s illustration showing a hairy, ape-like creature that George kind of liked. And I said, well, let's make it more like a squirrel face or cat face. Or, you know, we tried to get something that was generic but not specific to any animal breed. We started out with the idea of him being looking sort of like a lemur. And then I did one creature with the, that had breasts down the front of it. I removed the breast because it wasn't to be a female. And I put a bandolier on there and I gave him a weapon. As in almost every aspect of the filmmaking process, creating the characters of Star Wars was a collaborative effort. I come up with an idea in my head of what I want a character or an alien or a set to be. Then I work with the, the designers to take what I'm thinking about and make it concrete onto a drawing. I got him! Great kid! Don't get cocky! Then I have to take that drawing and turn it over to the art department or the prop department or the makeup department. And they have to then translate that into a real mechanical plastic and fur reality. We didn't really have the ability to do animated characters at that point. So I made the decision with Chewbacca that it would be a, a, a large man in a suit. They said it was hairy and big, and that was all that, they, all that they said. We arrive up there, looked around, and there is Ralph McQuarrie's drawing of a Neanderthal man. But the difference was Ralph had put Bermuda shorts and a vest on Chewie. <laughs> Trust him, trust him! To make Chewbacca's facial expressions believable, Lucas turned to one of the few experts in the field. I was working with Stuart Freeborn, who did the apes on 2001. I thought it was a fantastic job he did, and since we had this Wookiee, I said, well, we'll use the same mechanics that they used in 2001 to create the apes. 356, take four. So he tried to take what Ralph had drawn and interpret it to use Peter Mayhew, and he is a certain structure, he has a certain way of walking, he has certain eyes, and taking his actual skeletal structure and turning that into a costume and a face that just mechanically would work. And that changes the design. I mean, just, you know, just by the nature of the reality of it, it changes it. Whenever you have a, a design concept and you put it into reality, most of the times, especially in the early years, uh, it would change everything. Now with digital technology, it's much easier to conceive of something, design something, and have it come out just that way. But in the old days, that didn't happen. 